Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for a bittersweet Battlefront 2 video. Today the community transmission for Scarif has finally arrived after weeks of waiting, but alongside the full details on the update came some news that most of us were expecting, but very few of us were hoping for. We might as well talk about this before getting into the details of the Scarif update, but it was announced today that tomorrow's Battlefront 2 update will be the last. Obviously, most of us would have loved to see Battlefront 2 continue to receive regular updates throughout 2020, but I would be lying if I said I wasn't expecting this. All of the signs kind of pointed to it happening, I mean we lost our community manager and heard nothing about a replacement, several developers have left the Battlefront 2 team over the past few months, and we didn't even get an event calendar this month, which is such a seemingly simple thing, and it just never came to be. Also, EA just pulled the plug on Battlefield 5, and to be honest, this Scarif update was somewhat of a natural stopping point. Considering both Supremacy and Co-op will now be able to be played in every era, it's just kind of a natural place to stop, even if I don't particularly like it. There's obviously still a ton of content that could have been added to this game that would have been absolutely incredible. I mean, there are very important heroes and villains that never made it to Battlefront 2, and up until this point, you could always kind of defend that by hoping they would make it in a future update. Now we know without a shadow of a doubt that major characters like Ahsoka, Mace Windu, Ventress, Jango Fett, and about 5 to 10 others are just never going to make it into this game. The same can be said for locations like Coruscant, Utapau, Mustafar, Sullust, even the first Death Star, they just aren't happening in this installment. Even though it's ending, I can safely say this game received support for far longer than I ever thought it would. I mean, at one point, I really wasn't sure if EA would even allow DICE to finish out 2018, and here we are in 2020, just now receiving the final Battlefront 2 update. Battlefront 3 is obviously not a sure thing, but I would personally be shocked if it doesn't happen for many reasons. But that's really not the point of today's video, it's certainly something we will talk about on the channel though. As far as this channel goes, I'm not particularly worried. I mean, every time I've covered other Star Wars games and other Star Wars media, you guys have been really receptive to it. I mean, some of those videos are in my top 20 most viewed on the channel ever. With that said though, we do have the full community transmission that reveals all the details on Scarif and all of the other content that is coming tomorrow. We may as well start with the new hero skins because we talked about them last week already, but now we have an official reveal of 5 new skins that will be coming tomorrow. The first and second skins we talked about last week after the lead hero designer gave us some pretty on the nose hints, but the first appearance coming tomorrow is Old Master Maul, which is based on his appearance in Star Wars Rebels. As you can see, he does have his robot robotic legs, something people have been requesting since the dawn of mankind, and with the last update that request has finally been filled. This may not be the exact mall appearance you wanted, but I do think this one looks pretty great. The second appearance we also discussed last week, and that is the Rise of Skywalker Palpatine appearance, complete with his red accented robes from episode 9. The third skin for the light side is also from Rise of Skywalker, this being for Rey, what DICE is calling the Rey Skywalker appearance. Of course, this is just her episode 9 skin, but with her lightsaber from the end of the film, and for those of you who really like using Rey in this game, you should be really excited, because it appears that Rey is getting two skins tomorrow, as in the brief clip they revealed of several skins altogether, they showed Rey with her blue lightsaber and her hood up, and in this same clip you can also see Kylo Ren with his hood up. The transmission only mentions the Kylo hooded appearance and not the Rey one, so I guess I'm not sure if the hooded Rey skin was left out of the transmission on accident, but EA does mention it in a blog post on their main website, so I guess they just forgot it in the actual transmission. So there's going to be one skin with her blue lightsaber and a hood, and one with her yellow lightsaber from the end of Rise of Skywalker. The Darth Maul appearance can only be unlocked by grinding 5,000 kills as Darth Maul. That's right, 5,000 kills, so it's definitely going to take a lot of grinding which I will attempt to do as fast as possible so I can get some gameplay for you guys. Ray's hooded appearance can be unlocked, at least according to the EA blog post, by uncovering a mystery on Takadana. I'm not really sure what that means, but I assume it'll have something to do with the door on the bottom floor of the castle, where she finds Anakin's lightsaber in the first place. But yeah, 5 new hero skins, which is more than I was expecting. I was counting on 4, so 5 is a nice surprise. Because two of these new skins change the era of the hero in question, certain heroes are being added to different eras of co-op, supremacy, and instant action. Like I predicted last week, Palpatine along with Chewbacca are being added to the sequel era maps, and Darth Maul along with Yoda are being added to the original trilogy maps, which I honestly didn't see coming, but is a fun surprise, especially with Maul. Yoda doesn't have an era-appropriate skin and is also kind of decrepit and elderly during the original trilogy, so it might be a little weird, but hey, 
I don't call the shots over at DICE, and I honestly don't think it will even be noticeable. When you see prequel Yoda running around, it'll probably be fine. If you are wondering what mode Scarif will be available on, it will be included in Supremacy, Co-op, HVV, Hero Showdown, and Instant Action. Also, yes, Shore Troopers are included in the update as new trooper appearances, as well as the map-appropriate skins for the Rebellion. Of course, most of the other original trilogy maps are also coming to Instant Action and Supremacy tomorrow, so Death Star 2, Yavin 4, Hoth, and Tatooine, although apparently Endor is not being included, which I suppose makes sense considering how linear that map is. I suppose they ran into a similar issue they had with Crate because they never added that to Supremacy. Speaking of Crate, if you guys remember about a month ago, I made a video discussing all of the missing content in Battlefront 2, so stuff that's in the files but had either been cut or just hadn't been released. And one of those things we talked about was the Sunset Crate map for HVV. Well, that is finally being released tomorrow, which is really good to see. It would have been a shame for that map to never see the light of day. One more thing in relation to maps, the Resistance Star Cruiser and the First Order Star Destroyer are coming to co-op tomorrow, so even more map options. They have also decided to add Starfighters as well as Vehicle AI to the appropriate maps in those game modes, which should help them feel a bit more alive. As far as hero changes go, to be honest, there aren't many. There's a ton of little changes like fixing clipping issues with certain skins and things like that, but as far as bugs or balancing that kind of needed to be addressed, there's only a few worth mentioning. They did fix the issue with Leia's detonators randomly going into cooldown before you've actually used them, so that ability will be more reliable. They also finally fixed Lando's weapon cooldown. Before this update, if you performed a perfect flush, it didn't actually do anything, and your weapon would still build heat, so that is now fixed. They also say they fixed Grievous' abilities getting interrupted by melee attacks, and his glaring issue with unrelenting advance just straight up not working half the time, but this is one where I'll believe it's fixed when I see it. They have said they fixed some of these changes like 5 plus times, yet they still persist. That's about it for the hero changes, I know you guys were probably expecting a ton more, and to be honest, so was I. There are other hero changes in the patch notes, I'll have those linked in the description, but they're all just like visual changes and things like that. They're not actual bug fixes or things that needed to be addressed. The reinforcements did see several tweaks as well, including some pretty significant ones. Honestly, more changes to the reinforcements and more significant changes than to the heroes, which is pretty surprising. The ARC Trooper has been buffed quite a bit, they increased their fire rate as well as slightly tweaking their damage, so they should feel a bit stronger. Unfortunately though, for those of you who want to manually fire the ARC Trooper's pistols again, like I do, it doesn't look like that change is going to be reversed. The Rocket Droid was nerfed pretty hard, which kind of came out of nowhere, they lost a full third of their health, being nerfed from 300 down to 200. I always thought the rocket droid had extra health because their dashes are way weaker than the other aerials, but apparently DICE didn't share that opinion because their health has now been nerfed down to the levels of the other members of the aerial class. They also slightly nerfed their ranged weapon damage from 25 down to 24, which doesn't sound like much, but this will make their blaster take an extra shot to kill all four trooper classes. A few more things, they have also replaced the Wookiee Warrior's Fortify ability, the one that gave him extra health, with a Charge Slam. I guess we'll see tomorrow how this actually works, but if the Charge Slam isn't a one-hit kill on at least regular troopers, this is definitely going to end up being a major nerf, but it all depends on how good that slam is. They also gave the Flame Trooper an alt fire mode, I'm not sure how this is going to work, but I suppose it's going to be like the Sith Trooper's alt fire, except with an incendiary element to it. After a few months of teasing it, the Cycler Rifle has finally received a buff. The damage has been increased from 65 up to 75. I'm going to be completely honest, I don't think this really changes anything at all. I mean, it still won't be a one-shot headshot on any of the troopers, so I still doubt I'll ever use a Cycler Rifle over the NT-242 or even the A2 CFE. Finally, they have fixed the issue with the officer's flash grenade blinding yourself through walls, which is a huge plus. It is so annoying to throw a flash grenade into a room, take cover behind a wall, and somehow still get flashed miraculously. But they say they fixed it, and I hope they actually have, because sometimes I get flashed from like 50 miles away behind like 16 walls, and it's just, it's, it's really frustrating actually. At the very bottom of the transmission, they do list off a couple of known issues, like the wrong announcers and appearances showing up on certain maps. I'm not sure if this means there will be bug fixes and other balancing in the future. Obviously, they've said this is the final content update, but maybe they still plan to work out some bugs and such moving forward, but who knows. I imagine fairly soon they're going to start putting all their focus into whatever is next, 
probably Battlefront 3. Like I said, after all the goodwill they built up by supporting Battlefront 2 and adding so much content over the past two years, I just don't see them not making a Battlefront 3 to cash in on that goodwill. Especially with next-gen consoles coming out later this year, it really doesn't make sense for EA not to do it. I mean, they have multiple years left on their contract with Disney, so you get the picture. EA is usually pretty predictable, especially when it comes to dollar signs. I will talk about that Battlefront 3 subject in a future video in depth, but for now I am just going to focus on covering the update tomorrow as thoroughly as I possibly can. There's going to be a lot to cover, and as far as the future goes, I mean there's a lot of Star Wars to look forward to. I know 2020 has been a major L for the most part, but there's a lot to anticipate in the world of Star Wars. Well guys, that is going to do it for today's video. If you did enjoy it and could leave a like, I would definitely appreciate it, and if you are new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. If this is the last news update for Battlefront 2, well, it's been one heck of a journey. I've definitely learned a lot over the past couple of years, and I'm excited for the future. There's a lot of upcoming Star Wars content I'm pretty hyped to cover. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Oh,